sections will provide the sector with a legal springboard for its modernization as well as address the shortcomings and failures that remain an obstacle to the sector's competitiveness. Invited to take the floor for possible additional explanations on the explanatory statement of the bill under scrutiny, the Minister of Transport began by stating that the bill under scrutiny stems from government's desire to update existing laws on railways, in particular Law No. 74-10 of 16 July 1974 and Decree No. 75 slash 588 on railway policy. Some of these bills have become obsolete. The bill under scrutiny has been drawn up with a view to bringing the rules governing the railway sector in line with the National Railway Master Plan. After this initial clarification, the minister outlined the substance of the bill table for your approval, whose materialization will enable Cameroon to better define and direct its policy and guarantee better management of railway activities in light of the development challenges faced by our country and the sub-region. In terms of form, the bill is structured in 167 sections, divided into 20 chapters, 11 heads, contrary to the 1974 law that I have just mentioned, containing 12 sections, 3 heads, and 3 chapters. Basically, the scope of the bill is broader. It now applies to the entire railway sector, whereas the previous law was limited to rail, policing, and security. Overall, the bill aims to govern one, the powers and interactions of institutional players, two, the nature and methods of managing railway assets, three, the principles and standards applicable to the construction and maintenance, renewal, development and management of the railway, railway network, four, railway safety and security, five, railway professions and technical staff, six, dispute resolution in the railway sector, seven, infringements and applicable penalties. With regard to the powers and interactions of institutional powers, the bill reaffirms the sovereign powers of the state in defining national railway transport policy and in promoting and developing railway activities. However, Alongside the state and the regional and local authorities, there are now two new major institutional players, the Rail Asset Management Company and the Railway Regulatory and Safety Authority. The minister emphasized that the role of the Rail Asset Management Company will be to carry out, on behalf of the state, the tasks of investigating, investing and managing railway assets namely, one, the management of assets and rights assigned by the state to the rail sector, two, managing and issuing access authorizations for railway operators, three, operational management of train traffic, four, the renewal, development and maintenance of railway infrastructure, five, the development of railway infrastructure, six, the protection of public railway property. The Rail Regulatory and Safety Authority is responsible for 1. Regulating, controlling and monitoring the implementation of agreements relating to rail activities. 2. Issuing and monitoring the implementation of railway safety standards and security rules in liaison with competent authorities and bodies. 3. The amicable settlement of disputes between players in the railway sector. 4. Protecting users' rights with regard to prices, services, and the quality of rail transport services. 5. Applying railway regulations. 6. Monitoring healthy competition between players in liaison with administrations and bodies concerned. 7. Formulating opinions for the administration in charge of rail transport in order to define and improve policies for the sector. 8. 
carrying out independent audits of agreements in the sector and implementing the resulting resolutions. Nine, proposing sanctions against players who fail to comply with regulations in the sector. Ten, approving tra tariffs for rail operating services and monitoring them in conjunction with the relevant authorities. Eleven, participating in the negotiation of rail transport agreements and conventions. As concerns the above mentioned stakeholders, it is envisaged that their names, organization and operation of will be laid down by decree of the head of state. The new bill provides an exhaustive description of the railway heritage and network and above all specifies how they are to be protected and managed. <laughs> From section 20 to section 68, there is a list of railway assets and infrastructures belonging to the public railway domain, the private domain of the state, and the railway network, which I will not delve into in detail with your permission. It also contains provisions relating to the protection of railway assets, sections 20, 24 to 26, 28, and 29. It mainly concerns provisions which improve the visibility of railway network management. Indeed, railway activities are now subject to the concession, licensing, authorization, or declaration regime. While the bill refers to regulatory acts for the scope of authorization and declaration, it specifies that the license regime applies to the technical and commercial exploitation activities of public transport, passengers or goods, including maintenance and the provision of commercial services related to railway activities. Licenses are examined and issued by the Rail Assets Management Company after receiving the, ass the assent of the Railway Regulatory and Safety Authorities. Regarding concession, it applies to the construction renovation, renewal of railway infrastructure, the management of the national railway network, the technical and commercial operations of rail goods, and all passenger transport services, as well as the maintenance of railway infrastructure. Concerning section 57 of the bill, the concession is granted exclusively to the assets management company, which also undertakes under the same section to comply with the legal provisions and the clauses of the specifications appended to the agreement. Generally speaking, the proposed management model is based on a system of clearly assigned roles and responsibilities between the asset management company, which builds and manages on behalf of the state, and the other stakeholders, especially national network operators, regional and local authorities, for the management of urban rail transport networks and operators of secondary rail networks, alluding to the networks providing connectivity with ports and airports. Whatever the applicable regime, common provisions require all stakeholders to comply with the rules aimed at contributing to transparency and security, namely, one, Compliance with the rules relating to the competition and interoperability. Two, obligation to keep separate accounts following the activities carried out under the concession or license. Three, compliance with national defense and public safety requirements. Four, terms and conditions for contributing to environmental protection missions and costs. Four, exploitation and management standards in railway activities under concession or delegation. Five, performance objectives and evaluation criteria for the concession or license. Six, obligation to comply with international conventions and agreements ratified by the Republic of Cameroon. For the Minister, all of these requirements are the subject of particular attention. Since section 65, the bill describes a code of conduct and rules relating to competition. Title II is entirely devoted to rules relating to civil and environmental protection.
Concerning civil protection in particular, this bill enshrines the desire to ensure the protection of people and goods within the framework of railway activities. Measures to prevent the risk of serious railway accidents or disasters, as well as those relating to the organization of emergency services in the event of such disasters, are implemented in accordance with the legislation in force on civil protection. The Railway Regulatory and Safety Authority, in collaboration with the administration in charge of railway transport and the other competent administrations, ensure the promotion of the prevention of serious accidents and railway disasters by raising awareness, educating the masses, and informing the public. Regarding environmental protection, given the environmental protection issues at the root of climate change, which is decried worldwide, the state is required to ensure that the implementation of the railway activities regime as set out in the state bill complies with its international commitments in terms of environmental protection. Railway construction and exploitation activities will therefore have to comply with the standards in force in the domain of environmental management. This concerns most especially the management of waste and affluence produced by railway activities, the management of hazardous or toxic waste generated by corporations, and the transportation of dangerous goods by rail. Concerning railway safety and security, the bill table before you for approval enshrines the creation of a regulatory authority, as I mentioned earlier, and lays down a set of safety rules applicable to operators, facilities, railway equipment, and rail transport users. The regulatory authority is responsible for ensuring compliance with the safety rules and operating standards laid down by regulation. To this end, it issues authorizations for the commissioning of infrastructure and rolling stock after checking that they are in conformity with the regulations. The role and obligations of railway operators are also specified, especially through the definition and application of operational instructions. In addition to the safety rules, the bill now requires all railway operators to take out a professional risk insurance policy for the technical and commercial staff on board trains. All the policies needed to cover the risks associated with their exploitation prior to the start of operations and a civil liability and global damages insurance policy. Similarly, all consumers of goods and operators of rail transport services carrying dangerous goods are required to take out insurance to cover their activities. The government representative did not fail to mention an important area, that of the railway professions. The bill he has the honor of presenting sets out the different categories of railway professions and the rules applicable to these categories, with particular emphasis on technical railway staff. Technical staff include workers assigned to train driving, station operation, traffic coordination, rolling stock maintenance, signaling, telecommunications, and track maintenance. Finally, with the presentation of the bill under scrutiny, the minister addressed the part devoted to the recording of offenses and their punishment. To ensure that it is enforced and to prevent abuses, the law provides for recording of mechanisms to detect and punish abuses with administrative and criminal penalties that are stricter and even more severe than those contained in the law of 1974. In fact, the bill goes further than the 1974 legislation by granting sworn officers of the Rail Regulatory, Regulatory and Safety Authority the status of judicial police officers with special jurisdiction, with powers to investigate and record the offenses provided for in the bill without prejudice to the prerogatives already granted to the judicial police officers with general jurisdiction. They are also given the power to call in the law enforcement authorities in the course of their duties to identify and question suspects 
and to negotiate with suspects. As for administrative penalties imposed on operators, these include warnings, reprimands, suspension, and withdrawal of the rail ticket or any other similar document. Broaching specifically to criminal sanctions, the minister stated that they are divided into two groups, offenses relating to rolling stock, customs fraud, and non-subscription to insurance policies, and offenses relating to traffic rules, safety, and railway sector. Operators of the network are particularly targeted with penalties of up to six years imprisonment and a fine of 100 million francs CFA, depending on the offense. However, the bill also covers offenses committed by people living near the rail network, in particular, track congestion, railway right of way, and damage to infrastructure. For example, anyone who enters or stays without authorization on land or in areas prohibited by security regulations and instructions, or who allows animals under his care to stay on the same land or in the same areas, may be punished by 15 days to 3 months imprisonment and a fine of between 100,000 and 500,000, section 155, 1 and 2. Concluding on those who damage an infrastructure or the adjoining right of way, or who erect works on the premises or store objects likely to compromise the safety of rail traffic, the minister stated that they now risk imprisonment of six months to two years and a fine of 500,000 to 25 million francs here. During the general discussion opened after these additional explanations, the concerns of the members of your Committee on Production and Trade focus on 1. The measures envisaged by government to guarantee competition in rail activities. Your committee members wanted to know whether the rail sector will be able to allow several operators to operate on the same tracks. 2. The mechanism for charging of rail services for the transport of people and goods. 3. How to take account of areas not served by the railways when setting transport of goods. 4. The improvement of travel conditions on the Yaoundé Gaoundéré railway axis through the creation of two railway lines. 5. The project to build a railway line on Gaoundéré Jamena section. 6. The acquisition of new wagons for trains serving the northern region. 7. Changing the engine type of the current locomotives. Your committee members wanted to know whether it would be possible to replace the diesel electric locomotives currently in service with electric locomotives in order to alleviate any environmental problems. 8. The taking into account of the psychological aptitudes of their staff in the same way as technical and physical aptitudes in order to guarantee a better security in this sector. Taking the floor to respond to the concerns of members of your Production and Trade Committee, the Minister of Transport began by thanking your committee members for their kind words addressed to him. With regard to the measures envisaged by government to guarantee competition in rail activities, the Minister recalled that the basic principle being competitive tender, the operation of the rail network is therefore open to other private operators. In addition, the Minister stated that competition is above all salutary and should raise investments to guarantee a better quality of services. Speaking about the pricing mechanism for rail activities, the Minister of Transport noted that the aim is to establish a system of attractive and acceptable fares. Prices are determined according to production factors and the supply and demand market. On the subject of improving travel conditions, the government representative revealed that the state has 18 months to make the rail system operational. The first phase of the five-year program has been completed and the second is underway, which will involve the rehabilitation of existing railways, particularly on the following routes, Douala-Gaundere, Douala-Limbe-Idenau, 
Banga Kumba. In addition, the Minister of Transport indicated that this existing route will be maintained to allow the use of old cars. The Minister went on to say that there are plans as part of future investments to create a second railway line in compliance with international standards, which call for a switch to the so-called standard gauge that is one meter. In other words, we are moving from a narrow track to a wider one. On the existence of a project to build a railway on the Gaudari Jamena section, the government representative emphasized that this important project stems from the head of state's desire to link our two countries via this section. For this reason, the minister said feasibility studies for this project began in June 2021 and will last for 24 months. These studies, which are nearing completion, are currently being validated. Once they have been validated, the minister added, the reports on these studies will be submitted to the two heads of state concerned. Concluding on his remarks, the Minister of Transport pointed out that the extension of this railway is a vector for economic growth in that it will help to increase trade between Cameroon and Chad on the one hand and to implement the social transport policy between the two countries on the other. With regard to the acquisition of new wagons for trains serving the northern region, the Minister of Transport stated that Negotiations for the purchase of 25 new carriages are underway with the Italian company Avangard. The aim is to increase the frequency of journeys, increase the density of services, and strengthen the current rail system. Referring to the question on changing the type of engine used by the current locomotives, the minister indicated that this change to an electric system could be envisaged. However, this is a project that requires a very large capacity and self-sufficiency in energy resources. Finally, on the subject of rail operators taking into account the psychological aptitudes of their staff, the minister pointed out that drivers are recommended to comply strictly with personal safety rules. It is therefore up to rail network operators to make their staff aware of the need to comply with these rules as is the case with drink driving. Concluding on this point, the Minister of Transport announced that regulations will be issued to specify the various conditions required for the exercise of professions in the railway sector. After these discussions, your committee members proceeded with the scrutiny of the sections of the bill under consideration. Sections 1 to 167 had no remarks they were adopted in their initial form. Having reached the end of their discussions and finding no substantial divergence with the bill adopted by the National Assembly, members of your committee on production and trade adopted each of the sections in their initial form as well as the entire bill number 208-BILL-SEN-3L governing the railway sector in Cameroon. They now request the entire house to kindly endorse their conclusions. Thank you very much for your attention.